need to reinvent Christianity. These popular movements are creating alternatives to biblical Christianity. church leaders who say we need to reinvent Christianity to reach out to what's called the postmodern generation. The core premise of postmodern philosophy is the idea that truth is subjective and therefore relative. Well, the emerging faith is subjective. It's a denial of absolute truth. And so everybody can have their own truth and we can all come together in unity. Within the emergent church, because they have thrown out the idea of absolute objective truth, the idea that we can open up God's word and discern his timeless universal truth to humanity. What has happened is they've basically exchanged a rational Christianity for a irrational Christianity, which is based on human subjective experiences and human subjective emotional experiences. The ancient future movement is also part of what's called the emerging church. The view is, is that traditional Christianity is too legalistic, too dry. The seeker-friendly movement is too superficial, too entertainment-oriented. People from emerging generations, those under 35, want a more profound encounter with God. One aspect of appealing to the postmodern generation is to introduce techniques, spirituality, litanies, rituals, and so on. This is called vintage Christianity or ancient future Christianity. Let's go back to the disciplines of the monks. Let's introduce some of the ideas of the East from yoga. Yoga, 2,000-year-old pagan religious philosophy, which is now widespread throughout the emergent church movement. Never see Jesus talking about walking prayer labyrinths, teaching his disciples to practice yoga, practice contemplative prayer. These are all things that don't come from biblical Christianity at all, but are being embraced by the emergent church today because they're looking for some kind of subjective, personal encounter with the divine. And so they say that if we can find these kinds of things in other religions, let's borrow these things from other religions and just call them Christian. For those uh, who profess to be a part of the evangelical church, they're now introducing prayer altars, prayer labyrinths, uh, techniques, bells, incense, candles, all of these things that have a very sensual seduction, but they're not biblical. Many people who are seeking after an experience to participate in Christianity are not interested in studying the Word of God. They say that you know, teaching the Bible word by word or verse by verse, that just doesn't work today. What you need is the experiences that you need to be able to smell God, taste God, feel God, touch God. Years ago, Psychology Today said that the Eastern worldview, Eastern religions would come to the West as a psychology. Psychology is not science, it is experiential. It has to do with feelings and moods and understanding. It also teaches uh, bottom line that we are innately good. This is an idea out of Hinduism. Christ in New Age terms is a state of being rather than a person. It means someone who is in touch with their higher self or their true self. They see Jesus as someone who came to show us our divinity. But this was God in the occultic sense. This is not the Judeo-Christian God. This was a God that resonated with the Hindu and Buddhist concepts of God, a God that you could have mystical experiences with, the God that you could embrace through uh, meditative practices, New Age spirituality. The concept of the divine in all is now considered to be quite normal, whereas before it was considered to be blasphemous. Contemplative prayer, also known as centering prayer, is where we can come to the fuller understanding of the unity of all that is. Well, these are classic Hindu concepts, you know, all is one, the unity of all it is. In other words, there's no such thing as good or evil or the kingdom of God, kingdom of Satan, that all is one, everything is united. The practice of contemplative prayer is a mystical tradition, which goes back centuries and can be traced back to a group called the Desert Fathers. It's presented as the way to know God at a deeper level. The centering prayer was where one goes into the silence, one takes a Christian word and says it over and over again, and you go into altered states of consciousness and you actually come out with the same mindset as people who are doing yoga. These ideas take people away from the Word of God to 
towards mystical experiences. And these experiences are exactly the kinds of things that are practiced in the East by those who promote Eastern mysticism. Contemplative spirituality is a belief that I can look within. It's a very subjective and experiential technique for finding truth, but not based on the Word of God, based on somebody's feelings and experience. And what we have to understand is that in a mystical way of approaching God, it's all subjective. It's all what, what you hear in your altered states of consciousness. Christians have to base our faith on what the Bible says. Christians have to have faith in the Word. Non-Christians have to hear the Word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. One of the major ideas of the purpose-driven movement is that the world can be transformed by working together for the cause of good, to bring a social change on planet Earth, to eradicate AIDS, poverty, illiteracy, and other major problems that the world faces. Rick Warren, in the purpose-driven movement, is going to reform the church. So he says, his idea is that we're going to change what the church does. Using modern marketing techniques and business management techniques, Rick Warren has a program called the Peace Plan. Rather than going forth and preaching the gospel authoritatively, calling people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to repent of their sins, and to uh, serve Him. Jesus clearly told us that the end was coming, and that as the end drew near, we would see more and more chaos, confusion, catastrophe in our world. And this is why, as Christians, we need to keep the gospel at the forefront, which is the eternal heart condition of men and women. The peace plan is we're going to go out and solve the world's problems, cooperating with the other world religions. Rick Warren he even says that the man of peace who could help you in a village could be a, a Muslim. Can you work with Muslims? Can you work with Hindus and bring this all together as one global faith? Biblical Christians believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah.